talk about is the pH formula. Um, remember what I told you, whenever you get a log without a base, what should you do? Make it 10. Often that will help you. So I'm going to put a 10 here and be like, thanks guys, but oh, that's a highlighter. Awesome. So I'm going to put a base 10 here. All right. Now, the good thing about this is you actually need to know basically nothing about any type of thing about chemistry, physics, whatever the formula they give you, you need to know barely anything. What you are being tested on is the mathematics portion of it, not the understanding of a pH scale, correct? You're being given a formula where you have to fill everything in but one variable, solve for the other one. That's ultimately what your goal is. Um, in chemistry, you'd have to actually understand acidity and alkalinity and where they fall on a pH. That is not being tested, okay? We're testing, if I give you this, can you actually solve it up? Um, so we're going to look at A. A says tomato juice has a hydronium ion concentration of approximately, approximately 0 0.0001 moles per liter. What is the pH? Well, I'm giving you a formula. H plus is the concentration of hydronium ions, and pH is the pH. So they gave us the pH. Or no, they gave us the hydronium ion concentration. They gave us H positive, and they want 0 0.0001 moles per liter, and they want the missing variable, which is pH. So, um, let's fill it in. pH equals log, we could put base 10, of 0 0.0001. It is negative log. Now log base 10 of 0 0.0001 is actually negative 4. Because 10 to what power gets me 0 0.0001? A negative 1. It's negative 4. And then minus the minus 4 is 4. Yeah, but you're not going to get an answer, are you? Now we're going to go to C. C says orange juice has a pH of approximately 3. What is the concentration of hydrogen ions? So they want H positive. Um, so they gave us a pH equals 3. They want H plus. So let's fill in our formula. We get 3 equals negative log base 10 of H plus. Now this is actually done quite terribly because people don't know how to, like, so if I have the variable beside the log or the variable in the base, the way I can solve that algebraically is converting to an exponential, correct? That's our job, our job when we have a single log. So, yeah, so what we need to do is remember that if we have an initial and final, whether it's an exponential question or a log question, so this one actually has an initial, it's a negative one, correct? I need to get that away before I can convert. I have to have a positive one in front of my log before I can convert. So I'm going to divide by negative one. So I'm going to get negative 3 equals log base 10 of H plus. Tegan, do you have a question? No. Okay. So we need H plus. We need an answer, correct? So what are we going to do now? Change it to exponential. So the base of my log becomes the base of my exponent. And what's with it doesn't stay with it, so I get to the negative 3 equals H plus. And 10 to the negative 3 is 0 0.001 moles per liter. And any time it would be a written response, you're going to write out an answer with a statement. So any of your written response in your unit tests or whatever, you should be reiterating what you found. So this would say the concentration of hydronium ions in orange juice is 0 0.001 moles per liter. Yeah. Uh, why would it be just... Because that is not a real math thing. The only way you can get the variable out from beside a log is converting it to exponential. There's no such thing as dividing by log 10. Oh, and then 10 is. Yeah. All right. Now, this is a formula you can use B2 minus B1 equals 10 log um, I2 over I1. 
Or B2 minus B1 is the difference in sound levels and decibels, and I2 over I1 is the ratio of their sound intensities where I measured in watts per <clears throat> square meter. The catch here is I always treat this. If not, you're going to have to like divide one by one or one divided by the intensity. I always treat that as like, like an I, like a capital I. So I always treat that as like an intensity. And this is what I do. If the intensity is great, so I treat this like it's one full I. If the intensity is greater than one, then I make B1 be the louder sound. And if the intensity is between zero and one, you're lost when I haven't said anything but wrote something down. Yeah. Okay, cool. B1 is quieter. So I've literally just read out a formula and then told you what letters stand for. So when you say you don't understand, it's probably because I haven't explained anything. I just wrote <laughs> All right, so here it says some common sound levels are indicated in the decibel scale shown. The difference in sound levels and decibels can be found using the equation, uh, where B1, B2 minus B1 is the difference in sound levels, and, and that's that ratio. The catch here is, is that because it's decibels, they go by a rate of 10. So, for example, if you look over here, a rocker is 200, a jet engine is 160, a rock concert speaker is 150, normal city traffic is 85. A shout is 80, a whisper is 30, rustle of leaves is 10. Um, and they're just in your decibel scale. Now, an intensity of scale is of base 10. That's why they have this in a log, because your intensity is base 10. So every 10 is much more intense. Um, and if your intensity is greater than 1, so that would be a 2 or a 3 or a 4, then it's growing. So it's 2 times as intense, 3 times as intense, 4 times, 100 times as intense, 1,000 times as intense, getting really loud. Correct? Now, if your I is between 0 and 1, your intensity is between 0 and 1, it's a quarter as intense, or half as intense, or a third as intense. It's getting smaller, right? It's getting quieter. It's a third as intense as it was, half as intense as it was. So then B1 would be your quieter sound, okay? If not, you have to remember which one you divide by 1 or multiply by 1. I don't do that. I just do I as a capital I. And then just make sure my B1 is quieter or louder, depending on the intensity level. So if it's getting quieter, B1 is quieter. If it's getting louder, I is greater than 1, then B1 is the louder sound. So here it says, how, mm, where's it going? This one. The sound level in normal city traffic is approximately 85 decibels. So that's one of the Bs. I just don't know which one currently, because I have to look for the intensity to know if it's louder or smaller or what it is. So the sound level in a normal city traffic is approximately 85 decibels. The sound level while riding a snowmobile is 32 times as intense. So I know that this is the intensity at the very least. I know I equals 32. Is that big intensity or small intensity? It's big. So B1 has to be my louder, and B2 has to be my quieter then. We agree? This has to be the louder one, this has to be the quieter one, because we have a large intensity. Now we have to decide is the normal city traffic quieter or louder than the snowmobile? So let's read it again. The sound level in a normal city traffic is approximately 85 decibels. The sound level while riding a snowmobile is about 32 times as intense. Yeah. So the snowmobile is the loud one, right? The snowmobile is 32 times as intense as the normal city traffic. So the snowmobile is the loud one. What is the sound level when riding a snowmobile? So this is the one we're looking for. That's the loud one. We're missing it. And this one is the quieter one. So let's fill it in. We get B1 minus B2, which is 85, equals 10 log of 32. Now, once again, this log doesn't have a base, so I'm putting base 10 because often it is way more helpful if you have that base there. It'll screen put me together if there's more logs at the same base, or we're going to end up having to convert at some point. Yeah? So I want to be 85 subtracting Yeah. Oh, they're just... No, that's wrong. This is... Let's 
B1 minus B2. Promise? <coughs> Promise? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever the first one is has to be correlated with your I. All right. So what do we have to do first before we can even do the question? Divide that. Divide the what? No. Well, this one we can just add the 85. So B1 equals fill it in. No, just go 10 log 32 plus 85. Why are you? Could you also do log 10 of 32 to the power of 32? Yeah, but I would just, that would be so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This one is a magnitude of an earthquake question. The difference in this one, this one has a 10 because they're using decibels. If they used bells, they wouldn't have this 10 in front. So with the magnitude formula, it's m equals log i over io. So it would be m1 minus m2 equals log i. It doesn't need the 10 in front because it is in the right, uh, it itself is a base 10 scale. The decibels, because we're using decibels, we need the 10 in front. If we use bells and to move the decimal over, we wouldn't need the 10 in front of the last formula. That's why this one doesn't have it. Same deal. If I is greater than 1, M1 is the larger magnitude, so the more deadly earthquake. And then if it's decreasing in intensity, M1 is the smaller earthquake magnitude. How do we know that? Because I just told you. What do you mean? I purposely am not asking you if it's dumb. Or either one of you said, how do you know that? Yeah, I was going to ask this. I also don't know myself. How do you know it? Because I told you. That's why. If I is greater than 1, then M1 is the louder, because it's drilling. You don't know what. I'm so confused. He asked me if I knew it, and I said, I don't think it's somewhere here. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So Kai's just trying to learn something before it's learned? Yeah. Okay. We'll get that, Kai. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about magnitudes of earthquakes. So this is like an earthquake that's either a big earthquake or a smaller earthquake. They could both technically be big earthquakes. One's just a smaller, bigger earthquake. So technically, you can have one at like 7.2 and one at 7.8. Well, they're still really large earthquakes. 7.2 is the smaller one. 7.8 is the larger one, right? Because the larger the number, the larger the earthquake. Now, if the earthquake is more intense than the other one, it would be 32 times as intense or 100 times as intense, which would be insane, or like 15 times as intense, correct? So if the intensity is bigger, the bigger earthquake has to come first in the M1, M2 scale. If your earthquake mag intensity is a quarter as intense or half as intense as another earthquake or a tenth, a tenth of intense or, I don't know, three quarters as intense, then your smaller earthquake comes first because it's only a third, three quarters as intense as the other one. So if your intensity is small, between zero and one, then the smaller intensity or smaller magnitude has to come first because you're talking about something that's smaller. It's a third as intense as the other earthquake. It's a half as intense as the other earthquake. It's three quarters as intense as the other earthquake. Then the smaller one comes first. But if it's four times as intense, the larger one comes first. 100 times as intense, the larger one comes first, okay? So it still works the same as the previous one. So here it says, how many times, nope, ignore that one, this one. A major earthquake of magnitude 7.5 
is 375 times as intense as a minor one. So the intensity is what? 375. So M1 has to be the larger earthquake or the smaller earthquake? The larger, and this one has to be the smaller. Because when my intensity is large, the larger one has to come first. Just like with the previous one, if my intensity was large, the louder sound has to come first because it would be louder, it's more intense, right? If this is more intense as an earthquake, then it would have to come first, the magnitude that's loud, that's larger. So we had to figure out, did we get, were we given the larger one or the smaller one? A major earthquake of magnitude 7.5 is 375 times as intense as a minor one. Did they give me the bigger one or the smaller one? They gave me the bigger, so did they give me M1 or M2? M1. And they want M2. So I do 7.5 minus M2 equals log base 10 of 375. How do I get M2 by itself? Log. You could add M2 to the other side, subtract log, or you could subtract the 7.5 and divide by negative 1. Either way, you're getting the same answer. Go with which way your brain would have done it. Okay? I will add the M2 over because I like having it positive, but you can do whatever you want. The other way you could have done it, you could have subtracted the 7.5 and divided by negative 1. You will end up with the same answer. So do it the way that you would have done it. M2 equal should be 4.9. So the great thing about the log questions is often you're given a formula, you just have to decipher it. And sometimes they'll give you just M. And you need to know that the magnitudes are it's subtracted, like we did in the formula. They'll say M is a ratio of the magnitudes, or M is the difference of the magnitudes. And they just put an M in there instead of an M2 minus M or M1 minus M2 or whatever. Okay? All right, so remember this, with with exponential graphs, you guys have to remember this, it's, you guys don't know your graphs well enough, and that's what's causing you problems. So with exponential graphs, you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. What's the only thing that can move it? Vertical translation. So your horizontal asymptote of an exponential graph is actually y equals the vertical translation, which is in your notes. Your domain of every exponential is x and l of the reals. Your range depends on if there's a reflection. If your graph is up here, your range is going to be y is greater than your horizontal asymptote. Correct? If your graph reflects, though, so you have a negative in the very front of your equation, because it's a reflection in the x-axis, then your range is going to be y is less than your horizontal asymptote. But it's going to be based off your asymptote. It's not equal to, because your asymptote exists there, so it can't be equal to that. So your graph is completely above, or your graph is completely below the asymptote, one or the other. There's no reflection in the front, it's above. Now logs are inverses of that. A log has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. What's the only thing that can move it? Horizontal translation, right? You have a vertical line. The only thing that can move that is a horizontal translation. So for log graphs, your vertical asymptote is x equals 
equal your horizontal translation. Your range is y such that y is an element of the real, because your graph is either going to be on this side and still be y er, or it's going to reflect and be on this side, correct? And that's a reflection in the y axis, so that's a reflection with the x value. So for this one, your domain would be x is greater than your horizontal translation, and then if I have a reflection in the y axis, it's going to be x is less than your horizontal translation. Still based off your horizontal translation, correct? One's just greater, one's just less. So if it's any other number what your horizontal translation, you're wrong. Now with logs, they'll set you up and put a number in front of the x, which you have to remember to take out, because you have to have a 1 in front of your x or your horizontal translation's wrong every single time. Correct? They set you up by leaving a number in front of that x. We practice that over and over and over. So if we look at these first few questions, Go away. All right. So here we have an exponential function. Exponential functions, horizontal asymptotes at y equals whatever the heck the vertical translation is. Right? So this one I know has a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 5. Now, am I allowed to write HA on a test? Yeah, it's in a multiple choice because no one's marking that. Correct? Am I allowed to write HA for horizontal asymptote on a written response? No. No short form but LSRS. Okay. Now it says A is less than 0. So even if I don't know that means it's a reflection, I could type in negative 3 or something and it would show that it's less than. Correct? Graphs down here, it shows that in your calculator. Yes? We can type it in and look at it. So I know that my range is y is less than negative 5. It wants the domain of the inverse. What happens? My range becomes my <coughs> domain because x's and y's do what? In inverses. Flip. So instead of it being y is less than negative 5, it's going to be x is less than negative 5, which is c. So you have to find the range of the original if you want the domain of the inverse, because the x's and y's flip. We agree? Okay. This one, I have a single log. I need it in terms of b, which means I need b by itself. b is locked in the base of a log. How do I get anything that's locked in the base or beside a log out? Convert to exponential. So I get b plus 1 in brackets, because that's my base, to what exponent? 1 half equals 3m. How do I get rid of an exponent of a half? Some people say half root. Cool, there's no roots on here, so that's not going to be helpful. But if I do a half, I can multiply it by 2 over 1, right? Because what's a half times 2 over 1? 2 over 2. What's 2 over 2? 1. What am I ultimately trying to get an exponent of? 1. So yes, you can take the half root, or you can raise to the power of its reciprocal, because that will turn it to a 1. Yes? So a half times 2 becomes 1, which is what I want, and then I have to raise this to the power of 2 as well. Do you see how I put that whole side to the 2? If you forget to put the whole side to the 2, you'll pick the wrong answer. You'll pick 3m squared. When it's not actually 3m squared, what does that turn to? 9m squared. Do you see how there's that error in there that could happen? So we get b plus 1 equals 9m squared minus 1. So it's going to be 8. All right, this one was supposed to say a, b, and d are an element of the integers. So the y-intercept, and I hear y-intercept, I stop immediately and I say x equals 0, right? I hear asymptote, and I know it's of an exponential, then I know it is y equals my, y equals my 
Vertical translation. We agree? If you're someone who's struggling with that, spend every single night memorizing which one gets you which for logs and exponential. If you take the time to memorize it and understand it, these questions will be super stupid easy. If you don't, they're going to be super stupid wrong every time. Okay? So, we need the y-intercept. So I need to plug in x equals 0. So I'm getting f of 0 equals a b to the 0 plus d. Now, some people think the a, b is to the 0. If the a, b was to the 0, I'd have brackets around the a, b. Do I currently have brackets around the a, b? No, so the exponent is only to the 1 in front of it. What's anything to the power of 0? 1. So it's going to be a plus d. The y-intercept is 4, first code. And then it has an asymptote at y equals my vertical translation. What's my vertical translation? D. So it's going to be y equals D. My answer should be 4, 7, 3. Right? This one makes me cringe. Because people won't notice something. They'll miss it, which will screw up the whole thing. It has nothing to do with logs and exponentials. What's not in front of the x? A 1. So I have f of x. Whenever I'm given an equation, I immediately check to see if there's a 1 in front of my x. There's not. So I get log base b of a, x plus what? b over a. b over a. Even if I've lost all my brain cells, at least I think there's a good chance I'd guess that one. Right? Because it's left. Yeah. Um, can you also just, uh, like, I know this is going to sound crazy stupid, but can you just leave AX plus D, subtract D, and then divide by A as well? So that X, so then basically you're getting the X equals kind of just. No. Nope. That's locked beside a log. You can't do anything unless you convert to exponential and do that. Okay. So no. Nope. That would have been just the luck. Um, this one here. Y-intercept, which I think? X equals 0. So I get F of 0 equals log base B of A times 0 plus B. So I get F of 0 equals log base B of B. What is log base B of B? 1. Say you forgot that. It tells you b and a are integers, and b has to be greater than or equal to 2. So I put in a 3, right? And I go log base 3 of 3, and it would tell me it's 1 in my calculator. Right? You can plug in numbers. You can plug in numbers. You totally can. Okay. Questions like this happen all the time. It's not a hard question. It's done terribly. It should be an easy question for every single person. They are always on tests. And why is this one harder? Because they don't let you Y1, Y2 it. Because they pull out the middle section of what your work should be. Right? If they ask for an answer, could we not just Y1, Y2? Yeah. So, when we go to do this one. People are like, you didn't give me enough room all the time. I, now, nowhere on here does it say you must show all your work on this page, right? It, there's nowhere on here that people just tell me that all the time. You didn't tell me I could use a separate, I didn't tell you to write on here. So you can take out a piece of paper, okay? So we have 3 to the x squared plus x over 27 to the 3x minus 1 equals 3 bracket 1 over 9 to the x minus 2. And you guys, I immediately will do this. 3 to the 1, every single time. What can I make them all be? Base 3, do we agree? And when are we allowed to drop off um, and take just the exponents? When I 3 to one thing equals 3 to another thing. 
one single three to something equals one single three to something, then I can set bases equal. I mean exponents equal. That's it. That's the only time I can do that. So I have three to the x squared plus x over three to the three to the three x minus one equals three to the one times what's one over nine? What's nine? Three to the what? Two. two. What's one over nine? Three to the what? Negative. Negative two. Now some people say, sweet, they're all base three. I can drop off the bases. That is not the rule I taught you. The rule I taught you is you have to have three, one single three to some exponent equals one single three to some exponent. If you drop it off at any point before that, your answer will be wrong. It will be there because they know that that's the oopsie that every single person makes, okay? So we're going to have 3 to the x squared plus x over 3 to the 9x minus 3, that's the next error for getting to distribute through, equals 3 to the 1 times 3 to the negative 2x plus 4. And then Mrs. Let's Sadness happens, because you guys will drop these off and make it be x squared plus x over 9x minus 3 equals 1 times negative 2x plus 4. You're like, no, I've never, you will all do that. It makes me sad. So let's not do that. Let's prove Mrs. Left wrong because she wants to be wrong. Okay, I don't want to be right. Do I have a 3 currently to 1 exponent equals 1, 3 to 1 exponent? Do I have that yet? No. no. So can I just write exponents equal currently? No, I'm not at that spot where I have to be before I'm allowed to take it and put the exponents equal. So what do I actually have to do here? Subtract. If you drop those bases off, you're dividing x's, are you not? Is that the rule when you have two bases and you're doing division? What do we actually do with these? Subtract, Subtract them. We don't divide them. If you drop that base off, you're going to divide them, which is totally wrong. Right? So we're going to have 3 to the x squared plus x, and then I have to subtract 9x minus 3. I have to subtract both of them, correct? So I'm going to subtract the 9x. And I'm going to subtract a negative 3. So what am I going to get? Positive 3. Now here I have two bases. If I drop the bases off currently, I'm going to multiply them, am I not? Is that the math we do when we have two bases that are the same and two exponents? Do we multiply? Um, no, we add. So that's why we have to get 3 to the 1 plus negative 2x plus 4. Now do I have what I told you you have to have before you can put your exponents equal? Yeah? 3 to 1 exponent equals a 3 to 1 exponent. Now I can set the exponents equal. Until then, do not do it. You will be wrong. So now I can. I can say x squared plus x minus 9x plus 3 equals 1 minus 2x plus 4. And then they wanted an x squared, so everything's going to have to move over. So I get x squared minus 8x plus 3 minus 1 plus 2x minus 4 equals 0. Right? I just moved everything over. See what I did? And then I'm going to get x squared minus 6x minus 2. And then it wants the value of c when I have x squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now you need, to pay, you need to pay close attention. If I say x squared plus bx minus c equals 0, my answer would be 2. You know what I mean? If I had x squared plus bx minus c equals 0, then the c would match with just the 2. Yes? But I have x squared plus bx plus c, so my c is actually negative 2. Because the plus sign would sit in front. Okay? Which is c. So, um, for homework, I would like you to finish the next page. Up to numeric response 4. There's not a lot. So, it's like a new question. Up to an infinity. Up to an infinity. So, just, so you have number six on this front page and then this.
Because I want to finish this booklet tomorrow and learn something different through the website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.